I'm watching but I'm not seen. What did you say? I'm watching but I can't be seen. Okay, that's because fine. my camera is not right. Okay, that's fine. Good evening, everyone. I want to I want to welcome you to tonight's local author spotlight featuring Farzana Moon. We still have some people entering, so I'll I'll keep letting everybody in. But my name is Sarah Webb. I'm the community engagement librarian with the Clark County Public Library, and I want to thank you all for for coming tonight to uh, one of our last local author spotlights, at least for for this go round. Uh, so we have, we have another great program for you planned. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nancy. Yes, so I wanna welcome you too. Very excited tonight to have Farzana Moon with us. And we're going to learn about her uh, career as a writer. She's written over 18 books. And so our format tonight is we will begin with an interview that um, Farzana and I had last week. And then after the interview, Farzana is gonna introduce her book, The American Queen, which is her most recent book that she's written. And then we'll have a time to have some discussion, discussion with Farzana. And then at the end of the program, she's recorded some readings, both from American Queen and some poetry that um, you can listen to. So we'll plan to have an be finished by eight o'clock tonight, but we're really glad you're here. So at this point, we'll ask Steve if he could play the interview with Farzana as an introduction to her. Welcome to the local author spotlight program with the Clark County Public Library. I'm Nancy Flinchball with Spiritual Seedlings, and I'm your host for tonight's program. Today we are featuring Farzana Moon, a local author, poet, historian, playwright, and a Sufi Muslim. I think Farzana muted herself. Farzana has a master's degree in education. She's a lover of books. She's a historian, writing especially about the history of the Mughal Empire and Sufi teachers. She herself is a Sufi poet and has written over 18 books on history and religion. She's also a playwright and her plays cover folk life and religion. Farzana was born in Pakistan, but for almost 40 years now, she's resided in Springfield, Ohio and is a US citizen. She lives with her husband and they have one daughter. Farzana's writing on religion includes Muhammad, mystics, Sufis, and mystics of the world, Hazrat Inayat Khan, and the American Queen. Here is her collection of books that she's written about the Mughal Empire. And these books include Babur, the first Mughal in India, Divine Akbar and in Holy India, Mughal Hedonist, Mughal Exile, and The Poet Emperor. She's also written these books, The Sharia Exposed, Hiram- I'm sorry, I cannot hear Desert, anything. No Islam, but Islam, The Holocaust of the East, and Bromont's Quartet. Her most recent book, American Queen, chronicles the life of the wife of the great Sufi Muslim Hazrat Khan. A reviewer has said, so while the book would be a treasured memoir and ideological compendium for devotees of Sufism and the Inayati order, for lay readers, it would be an absorbing fairy tale of the power of love, of consecration, and a woman's strength of character and single-minded devotion. That, contrary to metaphor, the meeting of twains is possible. It's very obviously the strength of this amazing discourse in spiritual romance. Hi, I'm Nancy Flinch Paul, and today I'm interviewing Farzana Moon. Welcome, Farzana, to our Clark County Public Library Author Spotlight Program. Thank you, Nancy. 
And I wanted to start by asking you a question. How did you become an author? Well, I think I was born born an author and I didn't know about it. Um, I just uh, recall one of my childhood uh, experience in school. I was, uh, we were on a field trip uh, in our school botanical garden and I uh, noticed it was after rain and the sun had come up and one rose bush was just uh, dripping with the uh, raindrops and all the blooms were just falling down. And I was just uh, spellbound by that image somehow. And uh, I just stood there rooted to one spot <laughs> and an impromptu couplet uh, came to my uh, lips. And uh, in, in Urdu, that's uh, our national language, uh, but I can roughly translate it. And it was like, this rose bush is so beautiful, but it's, uh, uh, it's uh, doubling down with grief. It's bent low with grief. And so that was my first experience <laughs> that, uh, of uh, writing poetry, probably my first poem. <laughs> they were inspired by the botanical gardens and that. Uh, and there was write some beautiful words. Yeah. What you saw. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so we are featuring your book, most recent book, The American Queen. Um, tell us a little bit about that and what motivated you to write the book. Um, actually, I admired Hazrat and Ayat Khan for years and wrote a book about him. And soon after I realized that uh, while I was writing about, to know about his wife, Ora, Ora, Ora Ray Baker, uh, whom he called queen of his heart. And uh, no one had written about her. And I thought that uh, she should be, uh, highlighted or known throughout the world, uh, much like him and his uh, kids. And they were a musical family. So uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, tell uh, her life story because Hazrat Inayat Khan's life story was already there. And uh, uh, I think that was basically it. I just uh, felt like that I have to write about her. <laughs> okay, so did you find anything challenging about writing her story? Actually, uh, it was exhilarating to me because uh, I somehow while I was writing, I thought I knew more about her than I could ever claim to know myself. And uh, I was talking to my daughter one day and I was uh, describing uh, her, Ora Ray Baker and her family and her children. And uh, uh, my, my daughter commented, mom, you sound like as if she's your family. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think she is because uh, uh, that's how I feel, as if I have known her all my life. Why would you recommend that people read this book? Uh, well, this book is about love and spiritual journey together as a whole family, uh, spanning uh, two world wars, World War I and World War II. And during World War II, uh, her daughter, uh, Nurin Nessa, became a spy princess for, Fran uh, for British. And uh, she was captured by the Nazis and killed in concentration camps. And uh, her uh, grandson, Piers Zia, is alive right now, uh, even now, and in the United States, and practicing the uh, Sufi tradition of her grand, his grandfather, Hazrat Anayat Khan. 
Uh, and there's a movie about uh, Nuran Nessa also, and she's called uh, uh, Spy Princess, and it's available online. Uh, and recently, I'm just thinking that it became so pertinent, even in this time, like talking about Hitler of World War II, and now we have a Russian Hitler uh, invading Ukraine. So it has probably increased, uh, I would recommend this to understand the atrocities which we are, which were done 80 years ago and now we are seeing them all over again. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of sadness in the story and, and a lot of people are experiencing that again, war. That's true. The war is awful. Now, a lot of people want to write a book, but many never actually accomplish it. You've done it like 18 times now, <laughs> and you've also written so many plays. So how did you, you manage to finish all these books and plays? Actually, I think probably uh, writing, was, writing was my passion, my priority, and my vocation uh, that I found worthy of pursuit. So, I could, at all times, I would carve out time for writing. Uh, and uh, when I needed chunks of time to write, because I did a lot of research while I was writing my uh, Mughal sagas. And uh, so at one time, I even uh, started waitressing and working in stores in the evenings. Uh, because I could only write when I was all by myself. And that was the time when my husband was working and I needed some money also. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, tell me about your other books. We talked a little bit about American Queen. What are your other books about? Um, they are uh, historical, uh, uh, philosophical uh, uh, books. Uh, which uh, have an angle of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, spiritual aspect uh, in all those books. Um, and they're, they are mostly uh, about the historical uh, figures, but when I was writing, I had, uh, I would start writing plays or short stories or poetry, but that was only when I, I was in between inspired to do that. So, so those are the, those, those, those were my books. So you're really trying to do the history and then the other things kind of came in between. Yes, they just came, on, came in, yeah. Oh. <laughs> just hit me in the head. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you have a meditation, this is, I'm going off my script here, but you have a meditation practice and you spend an hour every day meditating. Do you think some of your creativity and your writing comes about because you do clear your head that way every day for an hour? Yes, uh, I think it in, it's very inspiring. Somehow things fall into place, like it's, uh, it becomes, life becomes harmonious and uh, all the pieces fall into place. So uh, spending some time in meditation doesn't take the time away from writing or inspiration. It actually uh, accelerates the uh, process. It's uh, like people say, I mean, I believe in like half of that is true. People say music is, uh, meditation, gardening is meditation, anything you do in life is meditation, and that is true, but to me, uh, we relax our body or give, give our body rest by sleep, but mind never sleeps. It's even working even while you are asleep. So in order to give rest to the mind, you do the meditation. That is what is the emptying out of all the thoughts. And that is when really the inspiration uh, just flourishes. 
And uh, aside from my uh, rewriting my contemplations, I'm writing another book uh, about Hazrat Anand Khan, about his wisdom and aphorisms. I really enjoyed the one book you have about Hazrat Anand Khan. You know, his teachings are just so amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, even as, as a Christian, I find them really challenging and helpful, you know, because he was speaking about yeah, yeah, he and he is the one actually, uh, who meditated for hours. He was a musician. He practiced his music. He gave lectures. He gave music concerts. And it was amazing. And I think it all came from his uh, uh, discipline in meditating. Well, thank you for helping bring his story and his words into our lives. And also the life of his wife, which was she was quite an amazing woman. So what advice would you give to other people that might want to write a book? Uh, I would say write from the heart. That's the seed of passion. If you try and explore its treasures, you will discover a world of inspiration. Because heart, heart, heart is the one, if we open our heart, and have love in it and that gives you inspiration so so don't uh, don't go with the trend what is the people are writing in the world or what is selling or something just write from the heart and uh, you will achieve success in my estimation <laughs> well thank you that touches my heart that you say that. <laughs> you know i think that sometimes when i write i don't I'm not writing the genres that everybody is reading, but I'm writing things that are, I think are really important. And I think you do too. Mm -hmm. You're really quite a treasure here in Springfield, Ohio. There are wonderful people in Springfield, Ohio and wonderful authors and you're one of them. So I just wanna celebrate your long career and your work. And I hope people will take time to read The American Queen and come back in June to discuss that with you. And there will be an option to discuss that by Zoom or also in person at the library the first Tuesday in June. So how can people contact you or learn about your work? Um, what would be the best way to do that? Um, actually, uh, they can contact me by posting uh, uh, or responding on my blog spot on my current uh, post. Uh, the one and the ones uh, who know me and who have my emails, my friends, colleagues, uh, everyone, they can, uh, they're welcome to contact me via email. And uh, all my books are on Amazon. And if someone uh, wants to purchase them, please write a review because Amazon only allows uh, to write a review if you purchase a book. Uh, but anyone is uh, welcome to contact me. And uh, if someone leaves a post on my blog, I would respond as soon as possible. Well, thank you so much. And I will have a few slides here to share that information so everybody can find your blog spot and also your Amazon page. So thank you for um, talking with us and you hang on here. Those on the live library, library program can now ask questions with Farzana after we hear her reading from one of her books. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. You are an inspiration. <laughs> we inspire each other. <laughs> fellow, fellow authors, thank you. Thank you. To contact Farzana, leave a comment on her blog at farzanamoon.blogspot.com and she will respond. All of Farzana's books are available on Amazon. Search for Farzana Moon's author page to find them. This has been an author spotlight interview with the Clark County Public Library in Springfield, Ohio. Okay, and so now, um, Steve, if you could share the two other little videos that will one, I think it's, they're both kind of introductions to the American Queen, and then we'll have some time for dialogue. Hi, Noreen, welcome. 
Glad you made it. You missed the interview, but now I, but you didn't miss it all. So now we're going to see who's going to share an introduction to American Queen. My name is Farzana Moon, and I'm going to give a brief introduction of my book, The American Queen. American Queen delineates the story of an American girl, Aura Ray Baker, who fell in love with an Indian mystic by the name of Hazrat Anayat Khan. They were married in London and settled in Paris. Their firstborn daughter, Noura Nissa, during World War II, became a British spy in Paris. She was captured by Gestapo and later killed in concentration camps in Germany. Their eldest son, Vilayat Khan, served in Royal British Army, docked on the beaches of Normandy to deliver men, weapons, and equipment to Allied forces. He survived World War II, and now his son, Pir Zia, carries the Sufi legacy of his parents, Ogra Ray Baker and Hazrat Anayat Khan. He lives in Richmond, Virginia, in U.S. Ora Ray Baker's memories are still alive in Fazal Manzal in Sorens, a suburb of Paris, where she lived and died, her home now a Sufi retreat. It also hosts memories of her husband and their children, especially of Noor and Nissa, who was posthumously awarded highest medals, French Cour de Guerre, uh, French Corps de Guerre, presented by General Charles de Gaulle, de Gaulle and British George Cross by King of England VI. She is also enshrined in a movie called Spy Princess. So you're going to share one more seed? I'm bringing it up. <laughs> For an overview, I have selected a few snippets from this book, uh, which I'll be reading. But before I do that, uh, when Aurora Baker and Hazrat Anayat Khan were married, Hazrat Anayat Khan gave music concerts and lectures, and he was most of the time traveling. So some of the reading uh, are their letters. Uh, he called her Sharda, my goddess, which means my goddess, and she called her Dea, that means my beloved. <laughs> And they were both poets also, so some of their letters end in poetry also. Okay, so now we'd like to give you a chance to talk with Farzana and talk about anything you've already heard about. Do you have any questions or comments? Thank you, Farzana, for the interesting book. I read that also. Thank you. Uh, it is Thank you. really, yeah, it is really eye opener. I did not realize how much she, is, you know, uh, daughter contributed, you know, uh, in the Second World War, and you know, his teachings is really so touching. Uh, really appreciate you doing, you know, a favor to all of us. I think everyone should try to read the book and you know, uh, it's really calming and has a lot of you know, uh, stuff in that which, which really gave you, you know, uh, Sufi, you know, a part of Sufism that you know, we sometimes don't, don't know. Um, but thank you again, I appreciate it. And thank you, Nancy, for arranging you know, this, you know, the book review. And I appreciate you know, your time for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Nandi. 
<laughs> Thank you for your support. Uh, may I talk to Sarah Webb or Nancy? Nancy, are you are you there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there were more clips in which I read about their uh, poetry and uh, letters written by both of them. Are those clips coming? Well, yeah, I thought we would, I thought we were gonna talk for a while and then after we're finished talking, we'll show all the other clips. Oh, okay. I thought you would show the people, all the people don't want to talk, don't have more questions, and we could just go ahead and show them now. But yeah, that's why because then they can ask questions if they listen to what I read. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and show the rest of them, Steve? Yeah, please. Hmm. Are you supposed to be speaking something now? The first snippet is when Aura Ray and Anayat Khan were married and they lived in Paris and London and they had four kids and they called them Ruby's Four. And this first snippet that I'm going to read is Sec, uh, Hazrat Anayat Khan's second visit to America. And he's writing this letter to her, to his wife. My Sharda, I'm unfortunately detained here as the quota for the Indians is full for this month in New York. So I'm taken to Ellis Island, glad to have this experience though to see what extent materialism has affected big nations. It seems contrary to the attitude of ancients of welcoming foreigner as a brother and treating him most kindly in every way that he may not feel he's in a strange land. As nothing disappoints me, this reception affected me but little. They would not have me any longer then a few hours only, I was to stand before a tribunal. They asked me many questions in connection with myself and my work, and I, whose nation is all nations, whose birthplace is the world, whose religion is all religions, whose occupation is search after truth, whose work is the service of God and humanity, my answers they found interesting yet they did not answer the requirements of their law. In the end, one of my murids, Maria, who was arranging my visit to New York, came to my rescue and answered all their questions to their utmost satisfaction. They seemed, in the end, much impressed and embarrassed and immediately exempted me from the law of geographical expulsion. My heart, my shadow. Be not anxious, my shadow. On his service I must go. Though parting is hard to bear, but it's God who meant it so. I will carry you in my heart wherever in the world I roam. His protection is over us. Rest in peace. Soon I will come. In response to his letter, Orare Baker wrote, the highest inspiration, beloved so true, the only consolation, my dear, are you. If ever there's a pleasure, search the world through. If ever there's a treasure, my dear, it's you. And now that life be over, not care I do. Sorry. <laughs> but fly from earthly cover, my dear. To you. Why I wrote this poem, I don't know, dearest. Just want to share with you. My health is great. Ruby's force and their love. We all await your return. Your Charlotte. Did you want to talk about that or you want to go on to the next? Uh, yeah, go ahead and read the whole thing because then that will give them the. Uh, 
overview of the book. <laughs> This is a brief snippet when Aurora Baker and Nanayat Khan were not married and he was in America and shortly going on a tour for his uh, music and lectures. Your friendship alone is a world to me, my Sharda, to satisfy your curiosity on account of Americans, I find them most sociable, friendly, and agreeable. They are affectionate and very generous, quick to respond to the idea of universal brotherhood, outwardly open to study any religion or philosophy. Their broad outlook has given me great hope and faith that their spirit of freedom in time would bring the idea of oneness to the view of the whole world. One great idea of disarmament started by the President Harding and embraced by all Americans is most commendable. This shows the bent of American mind, besides, to their friends or enemies in trouble. Whenever the occasion has arisen, America has most generously come first to their rescue. They also have great love for knowledge, search for truth, and tendency to unity. America, so full of life, goodwill, and enthusiasm, though still in its childhood, will become a youth who will lead the world toward progress. Now should he do the poems? Yes, please. Okay. Noor Nissa, while in Paris studying, became a poetess also. And every time it was her parents' birthday or her brother's or sister's birthday, she would write a poem. And this one I'm reading, she wrote it for her mom, whom she loved the most. A little fairy told me why the flowers wake in May, she said. It's for the birthday of little Aura Ray. The sun, they say, is jealous of her lovely golden hair. The flowers took their sweetest. Just try to be as fair. This is another of Hazrat Anayat Khan's poem that he sent to his wife from abroad. A most loving mother and a wife so true, most dearly beloved, my Sharda are you. It's only your pleasure which I try to do. If I have a treasure, my Sharda, it's you. All my success in life, who is credit due? Who is my inspirer? My Sharda, it's you. Many friends I have known, but faithful are few, and my only best friend, my Sharda, are you. And when life is blue, who is always near me? My Sharda, it's you. Health, wealth, and happiness to my Sharda give. God always protect her, and may she long live. I think there's one more. This is another of Hazrat and Ayat Khan's poem. He wrote for his wife, Ora Ray Baker. To my Sharda, as sweet as the honeycomb, as sacred as the Church of Rome, 
as pretty as the flower of lover's dream. And now I will give a brief uh, snippet of their first daughter, born in Kremlin in Russia. Uh, and just uh, to know how they felt when she was born. New Year Day, the Kremlin walls now draped in curtains of snow as if heaven itself was lowering confetti. Was welcoming the baby girl born to Aura Ray Baker. Mushid's joy was on the rungs of ecstasy. It was obvious, so profound and boundless that he rocked his daughter in his arms, singing and capering in the large bedroom while Aura Ray Baker lay on her bed exhausted. She watched her husband's joy with great delight, her own heart glowing with love, so bright that she, she could feel its brilliance inside the altar of her soul. Murshid, as Hazrat Anayat Khan was called, named his daughter Nuran Nisa, meaning light among women. Ora Ray Baker called her Rusi, meaning born in Russia. This precious bundle of love was their little princess, Noor, Rusi, Babsi, and Babuli, meaning father's daughter. Ora Ray Baker was re regaining her strength while enjoying the soft comfort of her Babuli with awe and gratitude. She still was not ready to accompany her husband to lectures and concerts, though he was busy once again more than ever before, always true to his promise of relating his experiences during the day to his Sharda in the evening. He had adopted a new ritual of singing to Noor morning and night, as if she could absorb his love in her little heart beating so tenderly against his own, brimming with song. Well, thank you for sharing those readings. Um, for, I guess <laughs> the first one, uh, were you gonna say something, Chanel? You got up. I was thinking about the first one, the first reading, you were, he was trying to get into the United States and they were really grilling him. It sounds like things haven't changed very much. And I think it's hard, hard for immigrants to come into the United States today. It's hard for him back then, but he had somebody who helped him. Okay. Well, some things have changed. Uh, the one reading she gave was one I had marked too, where the Hazrat was talking about the character of Americans being quick to respond to the idea of universal brotherhood and open to the idea of disarmament. <laughs> I, just, I don't think you would say that necessarily about the present situation of our country, you know, so that that was, it was striking to me to hear that very optimistic assessment of American society in the early part of the 20th century. Well, some, of us, some of us would still be like that. Looks like Chanel's trying to say something. No, no. <laughs> I'm just suppressing a cough. <laughs> you you want to say something? Mm -hmm. You want to say something? No. Well, I wanted to say that um, with all, of, yeah, with, with all of Farzana's books, um, I love the research that, that is done. It, I, I feel like I can trust you know, the information to be authentic, because I know she does a lot of reading and research and sometimes even travel to get the stories right. And um, and it, with that particular story too, um, I really, that's probably my favorite of the ones you've written. I, I also really like um, the one about Muhammad and the, the, the one about the Taj Mahal, 
those those three are my favorites but um but it's the research that i i really appreciate as i read them thank you margie <laughs> have you read all of her books margie no nah, not all of them i um <laughs> A lot of them, but not all. Those, those are my favorites. I was really drawn by the, the book that had all of the writings of Hazrat in a Yat Khan, I guess, or his wife or his husband. <laughs> Just the, the Sufi, um, you know, I guess he was a philosopher, he's writing I just, I don't know. I just thought it was very beautiful and things that I could believe too, you know, about love and um, the spiritual path. I really liked that. I thought the American Queen was kind of a sad story. I mean, living during the war, I felt really sorry for her. I don't know if anybody else felt that way. <laughs> I just... Steve just started reading it, right? We're going to discuss the book in June, on the first Tuesday in June. So if you haven't read it yet, the library has some copies, or you can buy one off of Amazon. And at 6.30 on June, what is that date? June 7th. June 7th. Yeah, we'll be meeting in the Gaia room, but also people can meet by Zoom. So I know a little bit about this, um, but how did you start to become a Sufi, Farzana? And are very many Muslim Sufis? Uh, not, not many. Um, I guess because I was interested in uh, Sufi authors and Sufi poets. And I think uh, um, one, 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 uh, one time I gave you a, a poem of Hafiz, <laughs> I can't recall it now, but you can jog my memory if, uh, uh, yes. It's about the sun, something yeah, about the I, sun. I think it was about the sun. Uh, he impressed me the most. And uh, the best of his poems that I liked, it said, all these years, all this time, the sun, never says to the earth, you owe me. Look at the love like that. It lights the whole sky. <laughs> I'm teaching a class at the Senior Center on meditation and co contemplative awareness. And yesterday I showed about a five minute interview mm -hmm. with Farzana where she talked about her meditative practice and one of the things she mentioned in that interview was um, the waterfall meditation, which is, I guess, a Sufi meditation where you imagine water just kind of cleansing you, coming down, and you use your hands, right? And yes, I, I, actually, it, it, is, um, it is on YouTube. Uh, and uh, it's mostly, I think, from India, all those practices and all those meditations and you can uh, incorporate in your own uh, uh, in in your own meditations so it's well, later uh, i'm in the class yesterday i also had our tai chi instructor and he was saying that waterfall meditation you talked about is very similar to what the qigong practitioners do they they use their hands and they imagine moving the chi down almost the same way the waterfall. There's such a similarity. And I, she also said, you know, that the meditation across the different religions, like I do Christian meditation, is very much the same as what she does, you know, as a Sufi. I think uh, all spiritual practices are the same. <laughs> they have one universal mind and they do the same things. So <laughs> it's nothing. I think this was a, I remember reading the book that um, Aura, her brother didn't want her to marry him. But this was a big thing. She was basically kind of had to run away from home and That's true. marry, didn't she? 
yeah, he he was upset. He he said, I don't want my sister's blood to be mixed with Indian blood. <laughs> so he just uh, very strange you know, because he was also a Sufi. You know, right? also the brother was uh, a student of the the Sufi, right? Uh, no, he was uh, studying uh, Indian uh, yoga and um, Indian uh, philosophy. And uh, he was a lecturer and gave uh, lessons, yoga lessons. And he was famous at that time, giving yoga lessons. So he was, uh, he was very liberal in that sense. But yeah, he He's did, the one who didn't introduced. want his sister to marry somebody, even though he was yeah. interested in what he <laughs> had to say. Although he introduced her to him because he was attending the music concert that Anathan was giving, and he invited her to come with him, come with uh, him. Well, you could tell they have a deep love for each other from the poems that you read. Yeah, yeah those are, whatever I read, actually, those are their words, not my words. Those right. are the letters they wrote to each other. Those are the poems they uh, wrote to each other. Farzana? Yes. Are you, uh, are you planning another book? In the future? Uh, yes, uh, yes. I, I'm writing another one about uh, Hazrat Anayat Khan, and that is about his uh, wisdom and aphorisms, uh, which I've admired for years. Uh, and I had to get, uh, and, and actually, his writings are uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is that property that becomes a universal <laughs> uh, property? I can't recall the name of that. In the public domain, maybe? Public domain. So his writings are in public domain. But still, since uh, I have access to those writings through my Sufi teacher, through Pizia, so I had to write a letter to him uh, asking his permission if I can use this in my book. And he said, yeah, they're public domain. You're welcome to use it in, in any book you want to. So at least I have his permission. <laughs> Are there very many Sufis in Springfield other than you? I, I don't know any. <laughs> not, not that I know any. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I, might, you know, there I might be might be in Columbus. Might be in Columbus because uh, I had a teacher uh, in Springfield, uh, Rick Wagner, and one time um, he introduced me to someone, uh, and they had a Sufi dance in Columbus, oh. and I think I went over there. So, so there are some, but uh, I, I'm I'm not familiar with them. Farzana and I wanted to bring Sufi dancers to Springfield for Culture Fest, but we couldn't find any. <laughs> yeah, I know. No. I know. I had to. I had to find that girl who was in Columbus, but I couldn't find it. Find her at that time. So within Islam, you would say that um, Muhammad was Sufi, right? Uh, in my writing, not that Muslims agree with that. In my writing. Uh, I say that because of uh, his uh, life experiences recorded in Hadith. And uh, like he was sitting in, a, uh, in the mosque and reciting some uh, revelations and one poet uh, wrote an impromptu uh, poem complimenting what he was reciting. So he got up and started dancing and his hand, one hand up and one hand down, like getting blessings from God and bestowing to the other. And later on, Rumi, the Sufi poet, he said, I got this dance in my dream from Prophet Muhammad. But, uh, but Rumi was uh, later, but Prophet Muhammad, this incident is related. And there are several more incidents um, in which 
he has the Sufi tendency. If, he, read, if we read the book on Muhammad, would that with us be in there? Yeah, it's uh, called uh, Prophet Muhammad, the first Sufi of Islam. Yeah, yeah. So all his uh, all his uh, teachings and all his uh, those things that happened during his lifetime are recorded in that book, and they are researched. So I think like the contemplative, Christian contemplatives, we're a small percentage of Christians. So just like the Sufis, maybe a small subset of Muslims. Yeah, uh, I think in all religion, uh, the ones who really understand it uh, uh, truly, they are the contemplatives because uh, they don't see any difference between religions. They see all of them as one because their understanding is much more than uh, like the priestly class, because uh, sometimes you take every word literally and uh, religion is supposed to be peace, love and harmony or beauty. But uh, then I don't know, it's distorted. And so the mistakes and the contemplatives come and they really explain what religion is all about. And they say, if you like Christians or Hindus or uh, Muslims or Sikhs, or if they came together, they will have no conflict. They will agree to each other's points of view because they understand. <laughs> because they have reached to that higher level of understanding where there is no conflict. I was remembering after 9-11 in 2001, um, Colleen Walters, who used to work recruiting um, physicians for the hospital, she helped organize a program at the Old Mercy Hospital. It was held outdoors called the Sounds of Peace. And mm -hmm. they had like chanters. They had a Hindu chanter. They had a Muslim chanter. They had a Greek Orthodox um, prayer. They had an African American gospel choir. They had a Native American um, bowl player and, and it was like there was just it was such unity it was so beautiful I still <laughs> always remember that the sounds of peace you know when we get together to pray and sing for peace there's a lot of unity among the different religions hmm. Well, we're getting close to the end of the hour. Do you want to make any announcements, Sarah? Sure. sure. We have some more um, of our local author book club programs coming up. Um, our next one is on Tuesday, May 3rd, and that's at 6.30 p.m. in the Geyer Room here at the main library. And that is with Angela Henry and her book, uh, Night's Fall. So we do have some copies that are still available for checkout. So please, uh, please look into that. Uh, and then we also have Farzana and her book, American Queen for June's uh, book club program on uh, Tuesday, June 7th at 6.30. And one, like Nancy said, both of those programs will also have a Zoom option for people that wanna join us uh, that way as well. So um, I will be sending links out with all of the um, programs that we have going on. There's some other author programs that are coming up this month, especially in May. I'll, I'll go ahead and send you all of the information there as well. Uh, so you'll know more about what's happening here at the library with, uh, with local authors, which is fantastic. So, and this program has been recorded. So it will be available on the library's YouTube channel. Uh, along with the other uh, authors that we've had in the past, uh, Kevin Krieger, Nancy Flinchball, and Angela Henry. And so I really do encourage you, if you have not yet um, read American Queen, to read that and then come back and discuss it with us um, the first Tuesday in June. So we can have this, there's quite a lot of history in that book, you know, spanning the world wars and their love affair and their work teaching Sufis and um, yeah. So I hope we can have a in-depth discussion. The Mams, My Magnificent and Marvelous 
book club who are in my books, they create, I always create a study guide. So you'll have, find out what the ma'ams think about the book and, and we'll have some good questions to discuss about the um, book. Did you wanna say anything else, Farzana? No, I just uh, want to thank you everyone who joined in, my friends and uh, everyone. I couldn't see everyone or individually thank them, but I'm uh, very grateful that they joined us. That's a great support from all of them. I don't want to point out because then I'll miss some. <laughs> Well, thank you for your writing and for all the um, history that you're sharing with us. So thank, thank you for you. your, your thank work. Thank you, Sarah and library and uh, everyone who did put it together. With the thank whole you, thing. Steve, for, for your work too. Thank you. And Sarah. Thank you. Stay well. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot, everyone. Night.